Holy guacamole, do we have some big, big news today, especially if you are interested or own shares in Workhorse. So earlier today, while I was at work trying to work out what video to do next for you guys, one of my subscribers, shout out to you, Malcolm, let me know that Lordstone Motors was going to go public via a bank check shell company called Diamond Peak Holdings, ticker symbol DPHC. And this is a definitive merger, which means that it will absolutely happen, no speculation. And this transaction will raise about $675 million for Lordstone Motors, valuing the company at about $1.6 billion dollars. And later in this video, we're going to talk about how that has massive implications for Workhorse. And believe me, it does. So when Malcolm informed me about this merger, I had to make a video for you guys immediately because I know a lot of you are very interested in Workhorse. So I owe it to you to have a good look into it to see what the implications are for Workhorse and also for you as investors or potential investors. So considering in the stock market, timing is everything. I've whipped up this video for you as quickly as I can. And believe me, that was no easy task because I work full time on top of YouTube. So if you appreciate this, please let me know by giving me a thumbs up on this video. All right, let's get straight into it. Since this merger was announced, Diamond Peak stock has gone up 21% and off the back of this news, Workhorse also went up a whopping 23%. So to all of you who got in early on Workhorse, well done, congratulations. And to those of you who missed out on this huge jump, don't be too discouraged. In this video, we're gonna look at a lot of really positive news for Workhorse that comes out of this merger because there's a lot of good things happening with Lordstown that directly affects Workhorse. So don't be too discouraged. And instead, just take this as a lesson for your future investing. Sometimes we've got to be satisfied with being near the bottom rather than waiting for the very bottom. Because if we don't get it right, we're going to miss these enormous growth days, which are so important, especially for a growth stock and especially for a growth stock that's in its baby phases. So don't be too disheartened. There still might be an opportunity. We've seen it many times where the market flies and then comes right back down to earth. So if that happens, make sure if you are interested in Workhorse, and you do want to invest, that you do pay attention to when it does come back down because it might be another opportunity for you to get in. But please remember, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not giving you advice. I'd never tell you what to do with your money. Those decisions can only be made by you. This is general information only on my own research. All right, enough dilly dally. Let's get to it. There is a lot to cover in a very concise video. Let's start smashing it out. So this reverse merger is expected to close in the fourth quarter of 2020 and will provide Lordstown Motors with around $675 million in funding, which CEO Steve Burns has said is more than enough to get their vehicle, the Endurance, into production by mid-2021. And he's also stated that he's thrilled with the opportunity to build Lordstown Motors into a top-tier electric company that is highly differentiated from the competition. And for those of you who have watched my videos in the past, shout out to you, you know that I love love a competitive advantage and I love anything that will help a company stand out from the pack. Now, one thing I've definitely noticed this year is these SPAC reverse mergers have become all the rage and it's starting to become a really popular way of going public, which didn't really used to be the case. So it's interesting to see people going this down this untraditional and unconventional route or route. It's only recently that companies like Nikola and Virgin Galactic and DraftKings have gone through this route of going through a SPAC company, a shell company to go public. And there's other companies like Hylion who are also trying to go through this route at the moment. So there's no doubt that this has become a really popular way in recent times to go public and get some early funding. And by the way, for those of you who haven't heard of Diamond Peak, they are currently trading under the ticker DPHC. And that's going to change to a smooth and sexy ticker of ride when the merger is complete. Now, I'm sure the reason you're all here is for me to explain to you how this impacts Workhorse. And as promised, let's go over that right now. So to do that, let's go back to my Workhorse analysis video where I told you that Workhorse granted Lordstown a license to the technology and design of the Workhorse W15 pickup truck. And Lordstown will be the manufacturer of those vehicles. And they've said they can produce 250,000 vehicles per year in the 6.2 million square foot facility that they bought off GM last year. And it doesn't end there because Workhorse also own a 10% stake in Lordstown Motors, which we now know as we discussed earlier is 
valued at $1.6 billion. And if you can do the maths, that's $160 million to Workhorse. And add to that, they've also secured a 1% commission on the first 200,000 endurance vehicles that Lordstown Motors sells, which will be a very nice income stream for a company that really hasn't had a lot of success bringing money into the company. And I don't know about you, but as far as I understand, that is the entire purpose of having a business. Now, to accelerate your excitement even further, since Lordstown Motors unveiled the prototype of their endurance vehicle in June 2020, they've already received 27,000 pre-orders, which is worth more than $1.4 billion of potential revenue, which is no small feat and no small number. And believe it or not, it gets even better. Lordstown are planning to start production in mid-2021 and they're expecting to generate $118 million next year in revenue and $1.7 billion in revenue in its first full year of sales in 2022. Wait for it. There's more with expectations of doubling their revenue each year after that before entering the SUV market, which could provide another massive income stream again. So if that all pans out, Workhorse is on track to make the big bucks because they make 10% of whatever Lordstown brings in and they get a 1% commission on vehicles that are sold by Lordstown in the first 200,000 vehicles. And while we're on a roll and a rampage, we might as well keep the good news rolling in. And that is that we haven't even mentioned the $6 billion USPS deal that could provide them with the launching pad they need to become a successful business, even if they only receive a portion of that deal to be split with another company in the running. So as you can see, there is a lot going on. And something that's going to give the workhorse bulls even more confidence is that the chairman and CEO of Diamond Peak, David Hamamoto, I think that's how you say it. I hope that's how you say it. Has said that they've evaluated hundreds of companies for more than a year and Lordstown stood out as a differentiated high growth company at the confluence of electric vehicles and light duty trucks, two highly valuable areas of focus and tremendous opportunity in the automotive sector. So there's no doubt they have a lot of confidence and belief in their decision to merge with Lordstown Motors, which just shows you what they think Lordstown can achieve and also what their potential might just be, which again has a very direct impact on work or stock because they own 10% stake in Lordstown and they're not the only ones who are excited. Lordstown has some seriously big fish heavy investors with the likes of Fidelity, Wellington, Herms Kaufman and some funds managed by BlackRock providing Lordstown with $500 million in financing which will be part of the total merger deal. As I said, some pretty big fish. I need to catch a breath. That is a lot of good news. But please realize while this is amazing news and these sales figures and revenue predictions are so exciting, they are just that. They are predictions. It is almost 100% speculation. They haven't had any proven results yet. And that's what we really need to know. And proven results is what's going to drive the stock price up in the long term. The short term is pure Hype. So even though it's all been speculative to now and there's so much more coming out, all of it's so exciting and so positive, it is speculation. Don't forget that. Now, one thing I want to make very, very clear to you guys is that a lot, a lot, a lot of EV companies have started coming out of the woodworks and making a lot of noise. And the fact of the matter is the likelihood that they all succeed and have great futures is very very low. So as investors, it becomes really, really important to predict the winners, which can be very hard to do. So because they're also speculative and there are so many coming out, it's just so unlikely that they all become household names. And you need to be aware of that. You need to understand that not all of them will succeed. And there's every chance that you bank on a loser. And that is a big risk. And it is something you must understand if you're looking to invest in Workhorse or any of these EV companies that I've been talking about or any that just exist in general. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not telling what to do with your money. I just want to make sure you guys are doing the best you can with your money and really taking into account all of the different circumstances and all of the risks that are at play. And with that being said, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And guys, this channel has grown beautifully over the last few weeks, going from 300 subscribers to 1100 subscribers in just a few weeks. That is enormous growth and I cannot thank you enough. Let's keep that ball rolling. Give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. And until next time, I'm Dan and y'all come back now you're here. See ya!